everybody, welcome back. Today is Saturday. I actually have a calendar. The 18th. It's probably about seven o'clock now. No idea. Um, I was at my LNS all day today. Well, most of the day today. We went and got dinner just now, but and because we had a little stitchy get together, which I think I told you guys about. So I decided to stitch on a year of celebrations. And I put in all I had was these four snowballs and like this side. So I added all of that. Oh, everything else basically. <laughs> so the bottom, and then I got up to this point and had to change threads and I grabbed the wrong thread. <coughs> Excuse me. So this was done in 3865 and I grabbed white, but it's not super noticeable. But since I did do it on these three down here, I am going to go back over the top stitch with the white. Just because you, the only place you can really tell the difference is in this block because it is um, right next to each other. So I have more of these snowflakes that go up the top. These are cut out because there's the word January that goes up here. Because I'd already started January, so I might skip February and go straight into March so it can be done. But we'll see how long it takes me to do this. And then there's a snowman down here. And then I get to play with color. So... Decent progress. I would have gotten a lot more done, but I took my mother-in-law with me. And she ended up being late getting here. So we ended up being late getting there. But since I was at the LNS, I went ahead and bought a couple of little kits. These were only nine bucks each, but I got little, they're both Mill Hills, the Happy Halloween. Or Moonlit Night as it's called and Wendy's Cat. This one was just, colors were too awesome. So yeah. And this one I just really like the moon charm. And I always love a good Halloween pattern. So there's a little moon charm in there, but that's the back side of it. And this one's got this cute little pumpkin charm that goes on his collar. I don't know what I'm going to do with these once they're done, but I was smart and I kept it small. Even though I said I wasn't going to buy a whole bunch this year, I kept it small. And then I went ahead and got my one, two, three stitch order in. So I got the floss I needed for Sperling Peacock. And then I got the Luck of the Irish pattern. I, had, I kept looking at this one and not getting it. And it just stuck in my head, so I went ahead and got it. And the only thing I don't think I'm going to do is that pink star. I might paint it so it's yellow. Because to me, I don't know, the pink star just doesn't make sense. So I'll probably paint it so it's yellow. Or like a really pretty, like, bright gold, like actual metallic gold. Let's see what that looks like. So the beads in this one are fun. They were just hidden. So they put, believe it or not, there's actually three colors in here. So this is the gold, the rainbow beads, and then the blue beads. And then All the multicolor beads with the needles. Yeah, so super cute. I'll probably be starting this one soon so I can get it done for St. Patrick's Day. But we shall see. Again, a small pattern because we know floss can't travel alone. And usually patterns can't travel alone. But in this case, since I was just getting floss, I made do with one. So that's all I got for you guys today. 
This is a new vlog series, isn't it? Happy new vlog series. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back. What is today? I definitely said it was the 17th yesterday. It was the 18th. <laughs> Which means today's the 19th. It is Sunday. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I showed you guys my January block yesterday. And I basically just worked on it all night and I finished it. It's definitely a lot brighter in person, the blues and the greens. It's a little bit more muted here, but the orange is 970, the green is 907, and the blue is 518, I think. No, I think it's 813. Yeah, 813. I guess I could have looked. No, it was 518. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's super cute. I was lazy and like this is supposed to be one strand of backstitch and so are these because there's like little backstitched um, tassel things on the end of the scarf. But it doesn't really look like it doesn't make a difference on the scarf I don't think. It's a little thicker but I don't really mind. So this is his earmuffs because he's looking up and I think it looks fine. So yeah, I'm really happy I got that done. I'm going to go to Joanne's probably on Tuesday, maybe tomorrow, but probably Tuesday. I wanna get some, I need to figure out a way to put this up. And I have something in mind, I think, but I need some fabric for it. So I'll have to see like what they have in stock. So I'm thinking of something like, just like a black and white buffalo plaid or something. But it's kind of weird seeing like how much brighter it is in person compared to the picture. Like again with the oranges, the blues, and the greens. It's kind of crazy. So anyway, that's all I worked on all day. <laughs> Um, I am kind of raring to start February and I might do that today, but I think I'm going to go and put in another row on George because it finishes off another thousand stitch block. So that's what I'm going to go do. I have to put in the stitch count on the outrageous for January because it was a thousand, a thousand and fifty one stitches I put in. And that's all I have for today. So I will see you guys all tomorrow. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today is Thursday the 23rd. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning. I ended up getting up about three hours early this morning, which for me is six o'clock. So it's probably normal for the most of you. And I already got a bit accomplished. It's gonna be be a busy couple of days at work. Um, report cards are due. Still have meetings with parents. Still have to try to get meetings with parents for the last three weeks. And lots of family drama has been going on. I did make a clip where I had shared some of it, but some of it's kind of private, and so I decided not to share it. It's not super private. Um, it's mainly just because there's minors involved. But I got, I haven't worked on George very much at all. So I'm not going to show him to you. I know you haven't seen him in a while, but I will share when I get to the end of the 10,000. But right now I'm only at four, I think. Because I have been focusing on... The year of celebrations by hands-on design and I finished February so my thought was I started this last week well not started it I only had the four snowballs done so at the stitchy get together last Saturday was it really only last Saturday Dang. 
I finished most of this and then I finished the rest the day after. And I know you guys have seen this one, but then this one I started, I, I decided since I did finish this in the month of January, I'm going to try to be one month ahead so that I have time for finishing. Not as in love with February as I am with January, but I'm not a brownie, pinky, ready person, so this block was basically doomed to fail. Still turned out cute though. I actually really like the color of the actual hearts. That like, and it's the same color that's around these hearts. And so today, while I'm working, I'm gonna try to get a lot accomplished today. I'm gonna try to get both of these finished and I'll show you guys my plans for that in a second. And I have some Cricut stuff that I need to do. So my plan is going to try to be to finish up a portion of my work stuff that I've been meaning to do or needing to do. I did start it last week. Um, it's just a lot. Like I have 24 kids and each kid's learning plans I have to do end up taking about half an hour. So I'm about halfway through those, not quite, but We also have attendance due today, but my meeting this morning got canceled. So I have another meeting tomorrow at nine. So I'm hoping I can, the one today was supposed to be at 930, but I'm hoping I can wake up early again tomorrow. I actually tried to fall back asleep today and it just wasn't happening. So anyway, my plans for finishing, I did go to Joanne's and I ended up spending more than I thought I would, but not as much as I thought I would if that makes sense. And I'll explain it in a second. So what I ended up doing is I wanted to go and find fabrics. I'm going to do a Priscilla and Chelsea type design. So I picked up this cool wood block. I think this is like eight bucks. It's an eight by eight. Each um, square is like two and a quarter, I think, two and a half for safety's sake. So what I'm going to do is, and I like the coloring on that, I picked up some fabric quarters because I always forget that Joanne sells these. So they're basically just quarters of fabric that are like left over from, some of them are sold like this, some of them are left over, but I just got black and white checker, which is going to be the base. So what I'm going to do is make another square to go inside here that'll be like yay big with the black and white checker and that'll be permanent. And then I'm going to switch out each month. So what I did for those is I got backing fabrics for those. So January, I didn't pick up because I know I have a snowflake, like blue and white snowflake design that I think you guys have seen before. Uh, maybe not. I thought you'd seen that in one of my bags, but I must have changed my mind. You guys have seen it before, though. And I'm sure I'll show it as soon as it's done, so. For February, I got the pink with the red hearts. And that pink actually matches really well with the pink on the outside of the heart, so that should work well. March, I'm going to use this fabric that I showed you guys last time, I think. I got these two. These don't have any purpose, but I thought they were super cute. And I do have a project that I could use these for, a cross-stitch project that I haven't even started yet. Um, or I might make a bag out of these, but I just like them. Then April. I was only planning, so the reason I spent more than I thought I would is because I was only planning on getting like the first four months. But each of these is only three bucks. So I figured, eh, why not? So April is probably going to be this one. May is I think 
This is May. I have to look at the patterns again and I don't have the picture with me. June. July. I actually don't have any patriotic fabrics. I don't stitch a lot of patriotic designs. August, I'm pretty sure is the one with the watermelon piece. Or it's got like a watermelon on it. September has the owls because it's a little school building. And November. So I'm missing, I couldn't find anything that I really liked for, and this is, I was planning on doing a brown, but this one just kind of popped out at me. And I think it'll match really well because I think there's some greens and stuff in November too. Because again, I don't have any like brown fabrics. So I'm short on September, October, and December. October and December, I'm not worried about at all. I have tons of Christmas fabrics, tons of Halloween fabrics. So it's not gonna be an issue. And I'm not expecting it to be an issue, but September, or no, no, that was September. That is all of them, okay. I thought I was missing one for some reason, but apparently I was doubling up. X is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. So that's all 12 of my project or 12 of my fabrics. So like I said, I'm going to try to do that today. We'll see where I get to. Last night I did put some more into Swirling Peacock. See the dangling thread. I'm still working on him. So this I used for the homework. I used... The P, we had to do sets of letters. One of them had a P for peacock. One of them had an S and I did the swirls. And then one of them was, had an F in it. So I did the feathers. Then I used actually this piece. Uh, I used this one as something that kind of makes you sleep while you stitch. And this one was boring because I hated the colors on it. The next box should be fun. But then I'm also using this one for the poem um, it mentions something about eyes, and so not only does the peacock have eyes, but so does his tail. So I haven't started the stitches for that part yet, but that's another 300. And I did all this while watching The Good Place. I realized I ended up watching on Netflix about, and this was last time I had watched it, I only got like halfway through season two. But now they release season three, and hopefully season four is out soon. They said maybe not till September, but since this is the last season, I'm hoping they put it before or earlier. Um, and Sabrina comes out tomorrow, the new season. So I'm going to finish up. I got like three or four episodes. Oh, and I watched all of Full House yesterday, too, the Full House reboot. So I watched the latest step or season on that. I don't remember if it's the last one. I don't think it is. I think there's one more season for that too, but so I'm debating finishing Good Place Today and maybe starting Sabrina. I remember season one pretty well. Season two is a little fuzzy, but I think I remember most of it. So I may not watch Sabrina again because I do need to listen to the audiobooks and catch up on Floss Tube. So I might make that the rest of my day, but I have to go to, I've been meaning to run to the UPS store for a long time, like two weeks, to turn in some books from a student. And luckily I found boxes so they all fit. I just did that this morning. So I'm gonna make a trip there today. Maybe grab some Starbucks because it's been a long time since I've actually had it. But probably just grab some lunch. And yeah, so I'm gonna try to finish up as much as I can today, work-wise. And I'm going to try to, you're gonna see some other crafts too because I do have some Cricut stuff to cut out. So, and I might dye some non-cross-stitch related fabric. So we'll see where I get to on that. Obviously not all gonna get done today, but we did finalize our plans for the Minnie's Moonlit Madness scavenger hunt at Disneyland. We are going to try to ride the new ride that opened, the Star Wars ride. What they're doing for that is you have to be in the park before it opens. 
and I think the park opens at eight. So I think they open the doors at uh, open the gate at six, and you basically sit inside for two hours, doing nothing. Wait for or a, then as soon as the park officially opens, you have to have your tickets loaded on your phone, and you basically have to sign up for a fast pass, and that's the only way you can ride the ride. There is no line. There's no queue. It's literally just whoever can log into the app the fastest. So the reason they're letting people in the park early is so that they can get their app loaded, get the tickets on it, so that they can, like, or so you can get it as soon as possible. Because they literally sell out or fill up at like 8.03, 8.04. So like five minutes after park opens, they're done. I was okay with not riding it. My husband really wants to because he works on the same, like in the same building as a lot of the people who built the ride. And so he keeps hearing things and he doesn't want to be left out. So I get it, but it's going to be early. So our original plan was to go to the, do that in the morning, you know, sit, ride or go in the parks all day and then do the hunt that night and get a hotel. But I figured out we'd have to leave at like four o'clock in the morning and that is not happening. So what we decided to do is to leave here the day of the hunt early. Well, not early, but like, because I still have, technically am working. So like noonish, so we have time to get down there, grab some lunch, maybe grab some dinner, ride some rides and stuff, and then do the hunt that night get a hotel room and then go in the park early the next morning to ride. And the thing is, is when you sign up for it, you don't know what time you get. So whatever time we get to ride the ride, we'll basically just hang out in the park until then. So if we get a Disney hotel, which we still haven't gotten the hotel yet, um, but if we do get a Disney hotel, they usually let you in the park early and you can actually ride rides early. So at least you're not sitting there for two hours like everybody else. So we're contemplating that and we'll kind of see what happens. I'm gonna be super tired because the hunt usually ends at like one-ish, like midnight one-ish. So that means we'll be basically sleeping for like four hours by the time we get in the hotel and like we'll register for the hotel and stuff before we go in the park, but yeah. So we'll basically get to the hotel probably about 1 30 to 2 and then we'll have to be up probably about 5 to get in the park you can tell how happy I am <laughs> it'll be fun it'll be fine it's just I wish this stupid ride didn't open yet <laughs> I wish it had opened earlier like Disney World opened in December that would have been great because then everybody gets the holidays out of the way but no so anyway, I should have a lot of stitching to do in the car ride. It takes about an hour and a half to get to Disneyland and I'm planning on stitching something small-ish. So I might start on my March block, but we'll kind of see where the homework is at that point because I don't find that out until Saturday. And since both car rides will be while it's still light out, because usually when we come back from Disneyland, it's super late at night and there's no light. I should be able to get some good stitching time in if. So what happened on Monday is we went to the casino. And even though I didn't spend any money or anything, I did. So I basically just sat in the cafeteria and stitched while my mother-in-law and my husband played. We came out ahead, which is good. But. I got super car sick on the way down, so I couldn't do any stitching. And then it was dark when I came back, so. A whole lot of not stitching going on lately. Um, but like I said, I'm gonna try to get as much done as I can today. I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> and I will see you guys all tomorrow. Maybe. It's, I keep saying tomorrow and then I keep not coming back, so maybe tomorrow. Hey guys, welcome back. It actually is tomorrow. It's Friday the 24th. It's 11.15 in the morning. And I actually got caught up with my work yesterday. I'm almost caught up for today. I'm just waiting 
for some confirmation on some grades and confirmation of how we send them. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of in a holding pattern right now, but I was able to finish another row on George yesterday and I was able to finish my homework for the week. And I was able to get to the other part of the moon. So as you can see, it's super close. I have three and three more columns and then like a tiny bit of the fourth column. And then all the backstitch and beads. But again, the beads aren't bad. The backstitch will take a little while, but I might use him for one of the extra credits, but sorry. As of right now, he's just looking good. So this will see the end of the moon and a lot more of the swirls. The swirls kind of take a little bit of time just because there's a lot of space in there, but the feather part actually goes really fast and I'm loving it so far. So I finished that part of it yesterday. I'm going to work more on George today. This is still drying, but it's pretty much almost there. So this is what the board ends up looking like. And then, so the only part that's drying now is the magnets on the back. I think one magnet should be fine. And then I'll put one on. I haven't even seen the final thing yet, so we'll see it together. But I did January. It's a little off center, but I don't like this should be a little bit further down, I think, but because it does cut off the top just as a tad, but it's fine. And then February. Oh, and I actually did a pretty good job centering. You could probably go more a little bit that way, but that's fine. And so, and then maybe stick more glue on there. And magnets are a little bit thicker than I thought they would be, but. It is. So there is January and it's leaning forward a bit and I think it's just because the magnets are heavy and so it's like pulling it down. So I might have to put a little piece of Velcro or something up here just to hold them in place. Like I said, this is the first time I'm putting it on here. And then... February. So I think this turned out super cute. I'm really happy with myself. I didn't finish the backs. I know Vanna probably would have. She definitely would have. I thought about it, but I don't actually have the materials. I don't have enough mat board to do another thing on the back. And I'm the only one that's going to see these anyway, so not worried about it. And there's just enough, well, almost, yeah, there we go. Just enough magnets for them to stick together. So storage will be easy. Anyway, super happy with that. Like I said, I'm going to work more on George. He is, I'm currently working on the 5,000 stitch mark. So I have one more row until I get 300 until I get to the 300th row and I'm at like 31% done. So I'm going to try to get 40% by February by Washington's birthday, which is the fourth, no, the 17th. So, right? Yeah. 
yeah, so the 17th of February. So I have a little less than a month. We'll see, especially because I got busy stuff coming up, but I'm going to try to get the 10,000 done as quick as I can. It wasn't, I only got one row last night because I kept getting distracted. So I'm not in the George zone per se, like I have been, but I'm hoping the more I do, the more I can get into it, if that makes sense. So I don't have any plans to work on anything else now that the months are done through February. I'm really going to try to make George my focus and we'll see how far I get. So 40% of the pattern or 40% of this color, no, 40% of the pattern, I'm at like 31.08 and each row adds like 0 0.1, like 0 0.11, I think. Um, to it. So once I get to 40%, that will actually be two thirds of this color done. And I think it's another like 60 rows, if my calculations are correct. I think if I remember it. So I don't have high hopes, but <laughs> I really would like to get the 10,000 done as soon as possible. I wanted it to be done before Tuesday, but because I kept getting distracted with other things, that is very likely to not happen. Especially since, oh God, tomorrow. <laughs> it's already Friday. Tomorrow, we're going to San Diego. And so I'm gonna have to figure out what I wanna stitch in the car. So I'll probably use my peacock and then I'm gonna use him for one of the extra credits, which will probably be like one of the 2,000 um, one of the resorts, which is 2,000 stitches, but we'll see. He, I'm pretty sure he has 2,000 left in him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he does. So that's probably what going to be what I'm going to do because he's really easy to stitch in the car. Super big holes because it's a casho. And... So you guys can see that super big holes and stitch in hand and doesn't use a lot of colors so he'll be ideal I will only get to stitch more than likely in the morning the ride to San Diego is about two and a half hours give or take um, we're going to see my sister-in-law just moved from San Francisco down there so I think she's already moved in so we're probably gonna go to she gave us a list of options and we didn't really agree to anything, but probably hit some craft breweries and things like that. And yeah, it'll be basically just a pretty chill day. I have no idea what time we're leaving, but it's probably going to be pretty early because we're coming back tomorrow night instead of staying the night there. So we shall see. I will show you guys my progress. I don't think I'll be coming to you tomorrow, but hopefully I'll be here sat or Sunday, tomorrow, Saturday, hopefully Sunday. <laughs> but like I said, I'm kind of in a holding pattern for work. So I'm going to go grab some lunch and I'm going to go stitch on George and I'll see you guys all later. Hey guys, welcome back. Today is Monday, January 27th. It's about 510ish in the afternoon, evening. I don't really know what five counts as. Um, excuse me. I was able to finish my work today. Except for one little piece I'm going to do tomorrow morning before we leave for the scavenger hunt. And I am going to put the scavenger hunt stuff at the end of this video. So that you can leave if you don't want to hear about it. But I'll tell you like what clues and stuff we end up getting. And hopefully the ride works out, but we'll see. We won't know until Wednesday morning. Yeah, Wednesday morning. Um, I'm going to show you George. That's why you guys are in my living room today. I did work. I haven't done a lot of stitching this weekend. I ended up getting sick on the way down to San Diego. 
like kind of car sick sick. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. It really depends on untangling the thread as we talk. Um, it really depends on how bumpy the roads are, I've noticed. And when my husband was last driving, <laughs> he's a little heavy handed on the brakes sometimes. Um, but I think it's because he still is getting used to his car. So apparently what happens is if it's fully charged, which it was at the beginning of the trip, there's no what what's called regenerative regenerative braking, um, which is where it like kind of slows you down as like as soon as you take your foot off the gas, from my understanding. And if the car is fully charged, it doesn't do that. And so he like, I think he has it turned on most of the time because he doesn't car charge his car all the way to 100 unless it's for a big trip. And so he just kind of forgets about it. So he has to slam on the brakes a lot, which does not help. And yeah, so between that and the LA roads are just awful. So once I get down to there, I can't stitch anymore. But I did get a little bit done. I ended up finishing the moon, which is cool, and started this next bit of green. So that's one color and I'm just starting the second color. Which you can tell is um, a lot more of the feathers because it goes all the way up. So it's getting there. I think that was like three or 400 stitches but I'm going to stop working on that because the homework this week is we have to, we're given four prompts and we have to stitch on the one that gets assigned to our group. And once it's assigned to our group, it can no longer be assigned to another group. So I'm in Boardwalk and we got the underground prompt. We were the second ones to get chosen, so, because she was doing it alphabetically. So I've decided to bring out my Disneyland map, and I'm going to try to fill in all of this on the Haunted Mansion, because you have to go underground to actually go on the ride. This stretching room is actually an elevator to take you underneath the railroad tracks. So interesting piece of Disneyland trivia for you. So I pulled all the colors for it. It's not too many. There's only like 10 colors in there. And it, I think it only has to be in the project. It doesn't actually have to be on the, the thing. So even though this is on the thing, it's just where I, I wanted to get back in and try to finish up that bit before I continue more with the green down there. So I'm going to, I know some of it that fills in also comes down to here. So I'm going to try to basically just follow the natural progression of the colors. <clears throat> I think I'm going to start parking a little bit more on it too, now that I'm not kind of going all over the place with it. But that's kind of all the stitching I did, or basically just peacock. I'm going to work on... Disneyland map now, but I'm gonna show you George. Because I know it's been a while since you guys have seen him. So this is, I think at the 300, or just past the 300 mark, I think I'm at row, I finished row 302. And I'm at the 5,000 stitch mark. So I'm halfway to my homework completion, or my um, extra credit completion. So he's getting there. It's going to be almost time for a scroll rod switch. Because we're getting to the bottom again. So yeah, he's looking good. I did get a little bit more into the 
some stitch and groove with him, I guess you could say. So I ended up doing like 750 stitches on, was that yesterday? No, I think it was on Friday. So we are leaving tomorrow, probably early afternoon-ish so that we have some time to kind of hang out in the parks before the hunt begins. And so we can avoid the crazy traffic at, I think he usually starts about three, so it'll definitely be somewhat, probably around 11 o'clock, which should leave me plenty of light to stitch by. So I think that's all I'm gonna tell you guys until I will see you after the hunt and hopefully I'll have more progress to show. See ya. Hey guys, welcome back. Today is Thursday, January 30th. It is about, it's almost noon and I'm exhausted. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you some cross stitch. We had our scavenger hunt and I'm gonna tell you guys about that. I'm gonna make this my last clip and then I'm gonna tell you guys about the scavenger hunt at the end. That way, if you're not interested, um, you don't have to hear about it, but I am gonna, I brought the clues so you can actually see some of the, like a bunch of the clues. I know we didn't win. I can pretty much guarantee that right off. Trivia was a little bit harder this year and it was harder to find answers within the time limit. Um, we did get on the ride. The ride was super fun, but we only had three hours of sleep. So I didn't get a lot of cross stitching done, but you will see two projects. The first one is the one that I had worked on for the car ride that I'm doing the extra credit for. And so he got another, I know one color, I don't think it's, I think he only got one color put in, so. Currently have two shades of green going. You can see the outlines of the feathers more now. The way down, we ended up watching a car chase. Like on, we saw, like, so as we started going down the freeway, we saw a bunch of cop cars coming the other direction and I was able to see like three or four helicopters coming from the other direction. So I did a search on Facebook, or I did a search online to see if I could find out what was going on, because obviously there was some kind of traffic chase or something like that. And so we watched that. So I ended up not cross-stitching, so I was watching to see what was going on. I never found out what he did, but I think a guy that just was speeding, or a girl actually, was speeding and then like just gave up peacefully or whatever. So nothing too exciting. Made some more cold brew. And apparently I'm going to drink loud. I also did finish the homework. I added a random needle, which I think goes on. Swirling peacock. Yeah, okay. So I finished the homework. And I don't believe you guys have seen this. If you have, I'm sorry, and you're seeing it again. But I finished up the mansion. Except for like one or two stitches which aren't even on the mansion itself. But it's looking good. I really like how the mansion turned out. Believe it or not, there's quite a few color changes in there to really get that shading into effect. And we're coming down here into Jungle Cruise, which is the last ride on this page, or on this side. But there's still a lot of filling in to do over in this area because there's there's still a little bit of mansion. Like if you see these darker blues or like darker teals right there, those are one of the ghosts. So I do need to finish up that bit. And then over here, there is a water tower um, that comes into play. So we will have that and then we'll have the actual ride. Which you can still see a little alligator down here. There's a boat right here. And then the elephant. So that's looking good. That is all the work I've done um, because of 
I was like trying not to fall asleep in the car yesterday. We ended up leaving around noonish and yeah, only having had three hours of sleep. I had a nice coffee. It was not helping. But I was trying to stay awake so I make sure that he stayed awake so we could tag team and make sure we kept each other active, I guess you could say. Sorry, my husband's on a conference call. Anyway, um, yeah, so I just, there was no stitching happening because I knew I would make a, probably a big mistake. And even just pulling it out seemed way too tiring. So we ended up getting home at about noon. I went and took a nap and he did, but I don't know how long he slept for. But I think I slept for a good like five hours <laughs> for a nap. And this is my first coffee of the day because we had to take the cats to the vet, so. Then I have to be up early tomorrow because I have a meeting in person. So, Saturday will be good. Anyway, so that is all I have for you if you just wanna see the stitching. Um, so if you're leaving me now, thank you guys for liking and subscribing. Thank you for commenting. And I will see you guys all next week. Week and a half. We'll see. Probably a week and a half. But I will see you guys all later. And if you're staying with me, I'm going to try to do these in order. So we ended up having an interesting day, the day of the hunt. So we left here at about noon, drove down. Um, we actually got there pretty quick. It only took us an hour maybe hour 15. So it wasn't bad. But we had gone to the hotel and then we went to leave the hotel to go to get lunch and we couldn't get out of the parking lot. There, like the gate would not open. So we had to call and it's like an actual customer service line. Like when you push the call button on the, the swing arm and that took a good like five to 10 minutes for them to let us out. So then we go to the Cheesecake Factory, which is part of like a strip mall type thing. The food is good, ate too much, but that's okay. We had carbo loading, right? We had running to do, or fast walking to do. A split a piece of cheesecake, left, and ran into a problem with their parking gate. Same company. The one we were using wasn't working at all so we went to another one and luckily that worked fine. Then we get, or, and then we go and park, which is kind of across the street, it's not too bad, but we didn't park in the garage because the other lot happened to be right next to our hotel. Enough of a distance that you don't want to walk it, like walk from the hotel to the parking garage or the parking lot. Um, and since we already had the, if we had stayed, like if we hadn't gone out to lunch, we probably would have just walked over anyway, but we knew we'd be tired at the end of the night and probably wouldn't want to be walking home or walking back. So parked in the parking lot, we go to check in. Check in takes a little bit longer for the first group because we have to wait for the first group to check in. They were able to check in. Like we, we basically walked around the park and stuff. We walked around California Adventure, took pictures of stuff in case we could use them later for the hunt. It got louder because my cat just came in and opened the door. Hey, baby. Here, I'm back. I'm going to close it. I'm going to stay in and then I'll close it. I'm going to open it. Yes, you're such a good girl. So we... Um, sorry, lost train of thought. I'm still tired. <laughs> Walked around California Adventure and we decided to go over to Disneyland. We actually didn't ride anything that first day. Just because, you know, we can go whenever we want. Riding isn't a huge thing. It was kind of more, we wanted to get there early just so we didn't run into traffic because traffic coming down would have made it two and a half to three hours instead of the hour that we drove. 
And so we like had some dinner. Only we only had like skewers and stuff or kebabs, um, something a little lighter. And it ended up being pretty cold. It was about 40, I think we had a low of like 45. So it was chilly. So we went to meet our friends outside, our teammates. They had gotten caught up in that traffic because they actually had to work. Um, my husband took the day, the couple of days off, but I was still like on call technically. But they actually had to be in the office. So they ended up getting to us at about five, no, about six. We told them there was no hurry because we couldn't check in until 10 anyway. And, but the first group, or we were able to check in at 8.40. The first group was supposed to check in at eight. Um, so they got there at six and we were like, just, you know, not a big deal. So they kind of meandered a little bit. So then we go to check in, but the first group still hasn't checked in because they were running behind. So we kind of sat around and I talked to his wife while, cause the, the two cast members have to go into the, like they both have to check in together. So they're in line, which meant him and, or me and his wife. Um, we weren't allowed to be in the line with them, so we just hung out and chatted and stuff, so that was nice. We finally check in, we get into the park, and then they have us waiting outside for a while, like quite a while. There's a lot of people. Um, and so the changes they made this year is that the trivia is not done in the building. It's done outside of the building after the spiel that they do. And everything was on the phone this year. They had their own, it wasn't an actual app. It was just a web page. but it used to be you would, you know, get your clue. At, so when it first started, or at least when we first started doing it, they would do trivia inside the building. It was only one group. And then they would like do a Scantron sheet you would get a, what they called a scatter clue, which is a clue to just make sure, like to send people to various areas of the park just to kind of clear out congestion a little bit. And then as soon as you got that clue, you'd write it on your envelope, go to Clue Central, turn in that, they would give you another clue, and then you would have to go wherever to solve that, go back to Clue Central, turn in your envelope, get another one, so on and so forth. Last year they changed it so that trivia was on the app. So what happened is we did trivia, then we went in for the spiel, and then they gave us the scatter clue and then we would scatter, but then they gave us, like once we turned in that one envelope, they gave us our envelope, which had all 10 clues in it. So we were able to go through and figure out what, like figure out a game plan. Like, okay, these are all in one area of the park. Let's all do these first. These are all puzzles. So we can do these wherever. And then, the, and they've always had one bonus clue. Um, last year they had two bonus clues. We, I don't think, solved either one. Um, and then you would turn in all 10 envelopes, like still write your answer on the envelope, and then you would turn in all 10 envelopes at the end of the, the hunt. This year, everything was done on the app. So this, unfortunately the same person wasn't there doing the spiel. Um, the guy that used to do it was the genie in the Aladdin show, and he always had like a monologue that he did with a bunch of like corny, punny jokes. Um, but he wasn't there this year, and I think it's because he's working on Broadway. So I guess he'd done it for like 10 years though, or something like that. So we went to, oh, and so then after you do the trivia, which is already on the app, you have 30 seconds for each question and then you just go start your hunt. All 10 questions are in the app and you can only click on one question at a time. Like, so you have to solve that question. It doesn't give you any hints about anything. You can click them in any order, but you have no idea like where you're gonna be going or anything like that. So they did have a clue central. So if you had a puzzle clue, you had to go to clue central pick up your clue, but luckily, since you are all tied together, they have a carabiner with, or um, a rope of carabiners on it, and you all have to be attached for the entire thing. It's not nearly as chaotic as when they had 
the actual clue central because it would literally like you'd have to wait in line to get clues at some points and it was I'm really glad they got rid of that the problem with this one is that we ended up only finishing eight of our ten clues because we were going literally all over the park back to some locations so the first clue we got was I should have put them in order, but I didn't. They did give us the two bonus clues because we could sell them at any point throughout the night. And so I'm going to do those ones first. So the first clue is that we had to go to pick up the actual sheet. So you can kind of choose if you want to do the bonus or not. So we did. So we had to go to the cafe and get the sheet for it which was oh, this is actually a blank one but it's all about giving and it's all so the people that run this are all volunteers and Disney actually has a program called Disney Volunteers V-O-L-U-N-T-E-A-R-S because like Mickey ears that do stuff throughout the year so this I actually really like this clue because it was so like the first question is Multiple times a year, including on National Family Volunteer Day, cast members help will help by packing food boxes to be distributed to those at risk of going hungry at these or at this location in Garden Grove. And so you had to find basically the names of different volunteer organizations that Disney helps with. And then what they do is, you know, so you write down the letters and each letter, or they have numbers. And so then on the back, what you have to do is to put the numbers in order, like whatever letters you get, so that it spells something out. And so it's actually a question, and so you have to answer the question. And it ended up being, I don't know if I have the solved one. Oh yeah, I do. So some of the letters we kind of got wrong, but you can still basically read it, we think. So the back of our shirts say, we are a team of what? And you can, so this is my writing, sorry, it's bad, but. So you can tell some of the letters are kind of off kilter, um, which means we got, some of the questions wrong or some of the um names of things wrong but that's fine yeah because that should be a no yeah so i think i got two of them wrong which was the first one and this one, which is really interesting because it fits, but I'm wondering if they maybe forgot to do, like they put the eighth, it should have been like there instead because it definitely should have been an H, but whatever, we were able to tell what it says. So basically on the back of the, what that means is the back of the Disney volunteer shirts, because they have writing on them, they all wear the same shirts, um, it says we are a team of what? And so that was the answer to the question. And so that was, we are a team of heroes. We had to Google it because we have, we're out of time at that point. The second bonus clue, I don't know if we actually got it back. Oh, we did, apparently. So the second clue was called Ribbit. And what this means is some of the cast member or some of the volunteers had little tiny frog pins. And it doesn't tell you that, it just says, Throughout your clue journey, you might happen to see a frog or two. Try saying a friendly ribbit to them and see what happens. You may have to meet a few frogs before you get your reward. Remember to speak the language of the frogs. So basically when you would see somebody, you would have to say ribbit to them and they would tell you a couple of words. So like the first one is over when, is over when, then we got is the next, and then we got after 2026. I think. So basically each frog would say like two or three words and you're supposed to put them together. The problem is like the first two obviously go together. So some of the, like this more than one different frog will have the same phrase. And so they do that. So you could try to, um, like, so it's not all the same person. So you have more of a chance of getting 
all the answers or all the clues. We are not completely sure if we got this one correct. Um, we think it's because it's Lunar New Year they're celebrating right now. We think it's when is the next year of, but there is no year of the frog. So, and it's the year of the mouse or the year of the rat, but year of the mouse for Mickey Mouse. Um, so we were thinking it's when is the next year of the mouse. And so that's what we answered was 2032. But we're not sure if we got that one right or not. So those are the two bonuses. Move those out of the way. The first actual clue we got, like I said, was a crossword puzzle. And it was... Basically just that. And then on the back, it's got years. The problem is the years are not in order. Um, but it's basically, so it's all about villains. One of our fellow villains has been hunting other villains for a reward. Fill in the crossword using the air guide sheets. Then basically plug in villains or like plug in their names or whatever into the crossword. So the problem with this is like I said, they're not in order, and you have some of them that are the same year. For instance, 1991, there was a lot of movies that came out in 91, but there's only one that's correct. So we actually didn't solve this one completely. This one took way too long. So you can see we have some blank spots. And so then what you're supposed to do is M22. Okay, well, M22 showing up backwards my camera but that's f yeah because my husband's handwriting sucks like um is that a t an i or an f <laughs> so the problem is, is like we were pretty sure we knew what movie but none of the villains that we tried worked like they wouldn't fit in the in the spaces. So I actually want to go back over and try this one out. But then of course it's, you have to unscramble it. These are the letters we were able to figure out. And somehow my husband was able to see that this spelled out um, the Sheriff of Nottingham. I don't know how he did it. I'm not completely sure it's correct, but I'm almost positive because he's really good at those. But yeah, I was amazed. <laughs> Like, would you, yeah. No idea. So we, get, we did that one. Like I said, it took way too long. Then we get this little beauty. So if you read it, it says someone has left the a domino. Coded message using the dominoes in Andy's toy box. Please help Minnie decode the puzzle below and answer the question for the message for your clue. That's it. That's all they give you. We could not figure this one out. They do have a clue help and we had to go to it. And so what it turns out is that, okay, so we did, like, we figured out that this means A, like A coded clue. But we couldn't figure out, so, like, are you supposed to add them together? Because, so one would be A, because there's one dot. But that would only go up to 12. And we couldn't. It made no sense. And apparently he had a lot of trouble with, like, the the clue guy that this was his special, like, his, they had a bunch of different people for all the different clues. So this was his clue that he had to help with. He got a lot of people asking about it. And we, this was our second clue. So if he already had a lot of people asking about it, obviously not good. So what if, what we finally figured out is that a is zero one, B is zero two, so on and so forth. Since six is the maximum number of dots, you automatically go to one, 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 because there is no one zero, because that would be the same as A. Like, see, that's, yeah. So one, 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 two, and three, one, four, and five, one, six, then two, two, because there would be no two, one, and there would be no two, zero. So once we figured it out, it was easy, but if he hadn't have told us that you can't have the zero or like the one zero zero one, we never would have figured that out. 
so we were trying a bunch of whole different or a bunch of different things and so it ended up being the correct answer to this clue is the number of points a hard clue is worth so this is a hard clue hard clues are worth 125 points and so what you would do is type it in the app and then you would be able to get your next clue which for us was i remember the first two for sure this, they're not and they're not in order um like, or they don't have numbers on them. But I think the next one was to go to, and not all of these have a paper. Not all the clues have a paper. Let me see if I can remember. We have one, five, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So three of the clues don't have papers with them. I remember two. I think the next one we had to do was this one. So we had to go to the Pacific Wharf. I'm not, I'm not actually sure what this is based off of. Oh, the Disney Descendants. That's... So this is Disney Descendants themed. We had to go to the Pacific Wharf and we had to like find different signs and see which ones are real. And then if they were real, we had to mark them off. We found like one or two signs and then said, you know what, we're just gonna go and see if we can, so like obviously Pacific Rim Foods is a real thing. So we just went through and like started searching for like clues that were on here. And then basically whatever letters are left over is what you're allowed to, or is, how you answer your clue. So it ends up being sorry, it's hard to see. Your answer is Charlie Sardines. Enter that on the app. You can stop reading. And so it's basically like you can stop reading. That's right. There. So basically your answer is Charlie Sardines. So that's what you type in the app. And I'm curious. We didn't get all of them, but we got enough that we actually solved this one pretty quick. You can stop reading. You can really stop reading now. There is nothing more for you. So means that's part of something hmm. anyway so it just basically says like you can stop no really stop reading like there's the rest of the message so that was pretty funny so after that we had to run over to the redwood creek trail i believe Did we have to go to the Redwood Creek next? I think next we had to run to, yeah, we did have to go to Redwood Creek. So the Redwood Creek is basically on the other side of the park. So we had to run over there to do a, like they basically have different totems that are lined up and you had to, they have little um, placards underneath. So you basically just had to fill in the word, the missing word of the placard. So this one was easy. Um, and then it was fine. So the problem is, is they don't give you the pictures and you don't know you're supposed to remember the pictures. Some of them are pretty easy, but then what happened is the pictures are on the back. And so, okay, for this totem, what's the third letter? Well, which one of these was that totem? There weren't that many, so we were able to remember some, but there was like three or four birds. There was three birds, so it was hard to remember which, like which bird was which. So, but this one didn't take us super long. Luckily, it was in order. This is the actual answer, but since it's not our language, it was a little catchy because you weren't quite sure. So, you do definitely have to read the the names, or sorry, read the directions to make sure you're doing it correctly. Correctly. So then we had to go over to 
the middle of the park, straight around all the way back, and then go into the shop there for, or the cafe, for a Sudoku puzzle, which I was excited about. The problem is, is that they were full and so we had to wait. So everything is timed. You only have two hours to do all of this. And we had to wait like one or two minutes, which doesn't seem like it's a big deal, but when you only have 12 minutes per clue, like average, it wasn't enough time. So we were kind of miffed about that, but I mean, what are you gonna do? So it was a Sudoku, but it was Star Wars themed Sudoku. And so instead of numbers, it was people from the, the shows or from the movies. That one took us a little while, um, not terribly long. We did need to use a hint because, you know, when you have four people trying to do a Sudoku, mistakes are gonna happen. Um, and we could have probably figured it out without it, but since we were already on a time crunch, like why not use clues? And so I don't have anything to show you guys for that one, but it was basically just a regular Sudoku. Um, but it was definitely more difficult because it's a lot easier counting numbers than it is trying to remember who's who and like go through all the characters and see who's missing. Then we had to go from there to, luckily we didn't have to go back on Pixar Pier at all, but we did have to go to, let's see, we didn't have anything in Cars, no, we did have something in Cars Land. What do we have in Cars Land? That's the one I'm missing. Oh no, that was the end. Um, This one we had to go to no you know what so before we had to go to the redwood creek trail we had to go to the hollywood back lot i do have a map so i can show you so this is the hollywood back lot over here this is this is the redwood challenge creek trail so we basically started off in Hollywood back lot. It was in the building, the show building back here. In that building. <laughs> then we had to go to, Clue Central was right here. So we did the first two clues there. Then we had to go to, let's see what was next. The Pacific Wharf, which is Like we kind of had to go in that area, but it's basically like right over here at the very entrance to the land. So it wasn't too, too bad, but and then we had to go over here. And so the clue we had over here, is that right? We basically just kept going back and forth. Um, no, th yeah, then we had that, which is the one we just did. And then we had to come over here to do a, Yeah, those ones are right next to each other. I'm missing one. I got to figure it out. We went to the um, backlot area to do Avengers themed. This one was really fun. All you had to do was throw bean bags into like it was basically a bean bag toss, and everybody ha got four bean bags, and everybody had to take a turn. Um, and once you got nine baskets, you would get a clue that is Morse code. They didn't tell you it was Morse code, but you could basically figure it out. So it was basically just like, here's your clue is dot, dot, dash. And so then you have to go on line to figure out, um, what your letter is. And then of course it's mixed up. So this one, and one of them is a three. So you're like, are you sure you got that right? And the clue was, what is the last words Iron Man says in the movie. The reason this one was cool was because they had all the Marvel characters there, except for I think Iron Man, he's the only one missing because they didn't want you to ask him what he said. <laughs> um, but of course he says a couple of different things. So it was 3000. 
Luckily, like I said, my husband's really good at figuring out word puzzles. So that was cool. If we had time, we would have taken pictures, but it was one of our last clues, so we ended up not. Um, then we had to go over to Cars Land. No. You know, I think we did this. I think we did this one, and then we went to Red Ridge Count the Challenge Creek Trail to do the totems because then we had to go back. And the next two clues were luckily in the same area, but the first one we did is hide and seek. So, dear Minnie, I desperately need your help. Rapunzel and I are hosting a dinner party in Corona and many characters have been invited to attend except for one. So it's basically, you have to look on the building, like the facade of the animation building which has a bunch of characters on it, and you have to figure out which one does not match any of the clues. So some of the clues are, I am not royalty, nor do I become royalty. I don't possess magical abilities, and I have not been affected by it. I've not interacted with technology, stuff like that. I'm not a dog, I don't sing. Um, so you basically just had to figure out who was missing. The problem with that building is that you really have to like walk all not around it but you have to like go like walk back pretty far because there's characters hidden by like the parts of the building that are jutting out so you really have to make sure that you're going through and seeing where all the characters are and we think we got it right i'm not entirely convinced our answer was correct but i'm gonna go through these clues later and kind of now that i have more time actually look at them but we thought it was geppetto even though i think he was touched by magic but he was the only one we could see that fit. And of course, like what, what counts as technology? Like, it, cause it could have been Woody, but does Buzz count as technology? But I guess they do use the computer, but I don't think Woody actually used the computer. So you really have to know your Disney trivia or you have to know your Disney stuff. Um, like I don't sing, but I've been involved in musical numbers. I don't remember Geppetto being involved in a musical number, so. But they did say like the clocks at the beginning, I think was our argument. But like I said, I'm not sure we got that one right. And then luckily this one was in the same place. So we actually had to go inside the building for this one. And Kingdom Hearts based, or Kingdom Hearts being going. So this one was all about going around to the different characters. And So we had to speak to one of the volunteers to get the first direction. Then we had to basically just follow the characters in the wall. So the, the direction we were given was that in the, they have these spinny things that like show you, you know, it's got, it's, I forget what they call them, but it's like, they have like a picture of a character. Then he's like slowly, like another picture next to it, doing something different. And then you spin it and you look inside of it and it like shows the animation happen. We had to look in there and see what character was in all of them. Cause usually they're, they're different, but for this, they had put one character in. So that was Hades. So then we had to go and find Hades on the wall. And follow their motion until he makes a stop sign. Cause it's like, it's like a film reel basically. So Hades is doing all these different things. And so we had to find the one where he's like going like this. Then we had to look down from that and see what character was down which is basically like a little, it's like one where they have like the, the disc with the two, where he's doing two actions and you spin it really fast and it shows him like doing the, whatever the motion is. So that ended up being Pinocchio. And then you go from there to, this character was given a gift from a guardian, find her. So that was a blue fairy. So we had to go and find her on the wall. So basically it was just following all around um, and following the directions. And then, of course, take letters <laughs> and put them in. So it, the hard part with these is going back and forth, finding letters. And, and of course, you're still tied together for all this. And so we're able to find out who wields Destiny's Embrace. So since it's Kingdom Heart themed, this was Kyrie. Then we had to go to Cars Land. And at this point, we only had two yeah. 
Um, we had two clues left, but we only had about five minutes, I think. Um, so we get there and we were supposed to put together a stained glass puzzle, a completely black and white. And it wasn't like a puzzle puzzle. It was just like a, basically a piece of paper just cut up into strips. So they did, or not strips, um, just like different like triangles and all these different shapes. And so it's basically just trying to put it together. They did mark the outline, but since it was a, a really, really intricate um, black and white line. So at that point, we basically had no time left. Um, by the time we walked over there, got the clue, really, like we started putting it together and there was just no, no time because we still had to enter the bonus clues as well. Like we knew them, but we had to enter them and you can't enter them while you're in another clue. So we basically just guessed, we got it wrong. Um, it was Darth Vader, but it was so intricate. Like there's no way we, even she showed us the big picture and we're still looking at it like, who is that? So there's, we basically had no chance of getting that one right. And then the last clue, we just guessed on since we had no time to go over to it, but it was something about Humphreys and so we just typed in an answer. So we know we got two wrong, possibly three. So we're almost positive we didn't win. <laughs> Um, especially since the trivia was a little bit harder this year too, I think. So we'll see how we did, but it was fun. It was just, if we didn't have so much back and forth, like running back and forth, and if we didn't have those two puzzle clues that just took way too long, it would have been better. So I'm hoping next year, like the app is great. It's a great idea. I just hope next year they actually, they put like a little hint next to the clue, like if you have to go somewhere so that we can plan it out a little bit better. Um, and Cause we would have, we, we would have finished if we had time to, like if there wasn't so much running back and forth. We thought that was supposed to fix it this year. Like that's why they went to the app because there wasn't, you know, you didn't have to go back to Clue Central and stuff, but nope. Still, still had to run. So we ended up finishing at 1 a.m. ish. Um, and then our bad luck kind of kept with us because they were no longer running the shuttles to the parking lot. We were supposed to apparently have pick, uh, parked in the parking garage because they still had the trams going for that. But we, I guess we just didn't even think about it. And so we had to get an Uber to go to the parking lot because it's far enough away that you like you have to get in the parking lot and then you have to take a bus over to the parks. And so we had to take an Uber over there, but the parking lot was closed. So the Uber had to drop us off like next to it. And we had to walk all across the huge parking lot to get to the car. By the time we did that and we got out and got to our hotel, it was already two o'clock. Like it took us an hour to like turn in the rope and make it back to our car. So we did that. We got in the room, basically went right to sleep and had to be up at five to go to Disneyland to ride the ride. The hotel had no hot water. So the, mor the next morning shower um, was not fun. It was like lukewarm, but it, it never got hot, hot. So it was at the point where it's like almost body temperature. So you're still freezing, but it's not like, like I was shivering, but not a great start to the morning after only three hours of sleep. So we get, we park in the, the parking lot again. They open a little bit later. So we actually could have slept in a tiny bit, but it's fine. Get in the park. And luckily we got in a pretty early boarding group. Um, my husband had looked online, like he had looked at tips and stuff to make sure you get a boarding group or not to make sure, but like try to help you ensure that you get a boarding group. So he did that um, and we were able to get boarding group 25. So what they do is they call boarding groups kind of throughout the day. So we got the number, we went straight on um, Space Mountain. Then we went to get food and we knew our number would probably be called like mid morning ish. So we took a little while at breakfast just because we were tired and I finally got coffee, which was great, but basically just took our time because we were in no rush. And then 
we still had some time, so we went on Alice in Wonderland, and we still, or, and then when we got off that, it was close to our boarding group. We were like, I think they were on like 24, so we just made our way to over to the area. And we're able to get right on the ride. Well, I mean, by that time, 25 was called, so we were able to ride it. The ride itself takes about 15 minutes. Um, the whole experience, or the whole experience is like 15 minutes. It was cool. I'm not gonna put any spoilers or anything, but I liked it. Um, I tried not to see any spoilers or anything and like tried not to like do anything related to the ride, like read it or anything like that because I really wanted to be surprised. So that actually worked out really well. I didn't know anything that was going on. And then they apparently had added some stuff from the new movie to the Star Tours ride, which is like the Star Wars one that they've had there forever but they upgraded it so that they can add different scenes in and stuff as new movies come out. So we went ahead and rode that after, um, and that actually didn't have a long wait. That was only like 25, 30 minutes. So rode that and then decided to call it a day. So like I guess I drove home, took a nap, basically got nothing accomplished yesterday, but that's okay. And now we're finally rested up. We should be good with everything. We slept to a regular time today and looking forward to the weekend, but have no plans other than watch the Super Bowl. But we'll probably go to the grocery store later on today or tomorrow and get some snacks and stuff for it. So anyway, I know this was super long. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to take screenshots and try to solve them yourself, go for it. <clears throat> if you want a different perspective, there is somebody who blogs all of the Moonlit Madness stuff. So if you want to do that, um, go to Tales of the Flowers. You could just Google that. Um, the Tales of the Flowers blog. I don't think he has this year's up yet. I haven't looked, but since it was just like two days ago, <laughs> I don't think it's quite up yet. But he um, he gets a lot of the clues and stuff in there. So and he gets pictures and stuff. So go check him out. So other than that, thank you guys for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for, again, for liking and subscribing. And if you want to leave any comments, I'd be happy to answer them. And I will see you all in my next series. Bye.